Welcome to the presentation, presentation about living business. I'm Mikhail Straubas. I'm working in Samsung Electronics Baltics as a technical pre-sales person for business solutions. Today, uh, the presentation is about mobility, about how we work and how we live. Uh, it's my second time this year when I'm presenting to the T Action in Thailand, so it was really good that we had totally different content for this presentation. I believe for every presenter it's, it might be quite complicated when you have to repeat yourself. So what will be this presentation about? It's about our Samsung Living Business Research that we conducted this year. And uh, after that, I will present some new solutions. Some, this is the first time I have a gadget I can present for business users, but also some information about the screen damages of our devices, and also a few points about management and security solutions. So let's start from the way we work and the way we live. In August this year we have, well it's not us, the survey company has completed a research in all three Baltic countries. Uh, in every country there were more than 500 people interviewed and it was about employee people in the age from 18 to 65. So all age categories and the single important per point was that they had to be internet users. So the first outcome of the research was that majority of people are working in the, within their private life. 66% of the employed people in Estonia surveyed during that research told that they are working outside working hours after work, before work, during the lunch break, and so on. We can actually have a look at when do we work. So, 58% of Estonian respondents, and that's the data for Estonia, 58% are working while traveling to or from work. 48% are working on holidays, like on Christmas days. 47% are working while spending time with friends. Let me ask, is it a quality time spending with the friends? If you have to answer your work phone calls or have to answer some e to read and answer some emails, even 43% of respondents told that they are working while they are in supermarkets. <laughs> I myself am do doing exactly the same. I'm checking my working emails while I'm shopping. <laughs> And uh, what is even more important is that the higher is person's position, the larger is the income, the more we tend to work during private time. Well, Estonian people are more relaxed than Lithuanians and Latvians. But even here, 84% of managers told that they are working during their private life, compared to 60%, 66% in total. Uh, we, we see that well, workers tend to spend less time for work out of working hours. And what do we do at work? We spend our working time for personal things. For internet banking, for reading news, for chatting, yeah, Facebook, that's great. For chatting with friends. So as you can see, more than almost 90% in every country has acknowledged that they are doing personal tasks during working time. So the good news for Estonia is that on average, people spend the same amount of personal time for work as they spend working time for personal life. Actually, in Lithuania and Estonia, the trend is that we tend to work more on our free time than we do personal things uh, at work. So, 
how do we do those personal tasks at work and how do we work outside of the office? Definitely the smart smartphone is the live and work blender device. 17% of respondents in Estonia use their work issue or private uh, smartphone for both for personal life and work. I believe I need to fix my microphone. Then on average, the organizations are embracing the new devices much slower than consumers. We saw 78% of people tend to use the same device for work and life, but only 41% of devices issued by companies are smartphones. Surprisingly, the companies are issuing still much more feature phones, those sold with the buttons, than they are issuing smartphones. And 64% of device phones chosen by people themselves, not given by company in general, are smartphones. So even here we have a gap of 20%. And again, Estonia is leading here. Uh, you can see in Lithuania and Latvia we have 31, 32% of devices issued smartphones. So if we look at the trend through different organizations, we see that IT and telco companies are provisioning twice as many smartphones than feature phones. Not surprised, this is, IT, uh, this is about IT companies. Other advanced industries are current engineering equipment sales and construction. And uh, when we compare the smartphones provided to the total number of devices, different devices provided, including desktop computers, laptops, and so on, we again see that the most smartphones are provided by AT and Telco, by media, and we see, uh, let's say, energy and utilities and construction, and real estate development. The, the interesting fact is that 71% of the employees in Estonia and 70% on our 71% on average in the Baltics say that they can bring their own mobile device to work. And in majority of cases, this is the initiative of the employee and not the company. So when people feel that they do not get the right technology to do their work or the right devices they would like to have, then if they are allowed, they tend to bring their own devices. Again, uh, there are some sectors, some industries where the use of private devices is restricted. And uh, to my surprise, the highest in all three countries uh, has been dairy industry, so food producers. The second highest, and that is not a big surprise, was the finance, banks and financial industry. The third uh, highest was the public sector. But again, this figure varies between the countries. In Lithuania, for example, 69% of public workers can use their own devices for work, while in Estonia and Latvia, it's only 56%. Only. So if we can use our private devices for work, do we have any rules to do that? In Estonia, 38% of employees using their devices for work know the security policies. 62% either don't know the security policy or there is no security policy. And that's the best result for the Baltic countries again. So in Lithuania and Latvia, this is this figure goes down to 31 and 33, 33. Not that much. So again, another look cross country, just the industries. Yeah, and the best with the security policies are again finance, it's public administration, and it's energy and utilities and pharmaceuticals. The worst ones are manufacturing sales of cars and engineering equipment, dairy producers, and media. So 
the worst ones it doesn't mean really they are bad yet. And again, the gap is not that high, unfortunately. So another factor is that security is very often understood simply as restrictions. Let's say up to 30% or 20% of respondents in Estonia state that their employers prevent them from using certain websites and services. Like Facebook, like Delphi maybe, and the others. Actually, Facebook and Delphi are the most protected sites. But the organization do not care that much about the behavior and about protecting the devices themselves. If you look here, two thirds of the respondents in Estonia have some kind of security for their smartphones that is used not only for life, but also for work. So it means that one third doesn't use any protection, or at least they don't know there is any protection. One sixth of the respondents cleared it, although they do not have any security. So maybe one sixth doesn't know that they have something that was installed by it, maybe. Uh, the interesting thing is that in Estonia, Personal computers are less protected than smartphones. In Lithuania and Latvia, uh, when we look at these figures, personal computers are clearly better protected than smartphones. We are talking mainly about private devices used for work or for purposes. And tablets are far behind. So how are those devices protected? 44% of respondents told that they are protecting their smartphones with the password. We did not ask how complex that password is, but typically you can Google for the list of most used passwords and try to enter, uh, let's say, five first of that list to the device. I believe that in many cases this will work. 22% of the respondents here in Estonia told that they have protected their smartphone with a device location tracking solution. Well, usually Google provides that, Apple provides some kind of that. Uh, another fact coming from Lucienia is, for example, that 18% of the respondents told that they are protecting their device using the screen pattern lock. That's very convenient. You don't need to enter any letters or numbers. But usually after you enter it, you have to wipe your screen, otherwise another person can take your phone and find out what the pattern was. <coughs> so another important fact is that 42% of people say that their device that is used for, for work is shared with others. In 36 cases, that other is partner or spouse. In 28% of cases, it's kids. But actually, for every country, it's valid the same. We have a gap of 7 to 9% where the device is shared with other. So in the survey, there have been options like spouse, kid, uh, friends, uh, colleagues. And there was an option other. So seven to nine percent is sharing with somehow uh, somebody. We don't. We cannot classify who that somebody is. And in most cases, you cannot control such behavior, and uh, you cannot control any accidental actions. If you are providing your smartphone to a three-year-old kid, well, maybe he will playing with that device, but he even accidentally can trigger some actions, like sending an email. Another interesting fact, every 10 employee <coughs> in Estonia is a hired hacker. So it's not a hardcore hacker for sure. But every 10th person said that he was working around the security policy to do some work he had to do. Meaning Facebook, uh, well, maybe Facebook is not the best example. But if LinkedIn is protected and you want to find some person for working purposes, 
you can sometimes find how to work around that protection. And this is also the way someone is hacking into the system. The hacker profile remains the same in all the countries. It's a young man up to 35. And as you can see, Lithuanians and Latvians are working around the security more than Estonians do. So if we will look, oh, sorry. If we will look at the industries, uh, the best ones are education, agriculture and fishery, IT and tel. So uh, I believe that in case of education and agriculture and fishery, there are not so many protections as the other data shows. So there are no limits, no policies to avoid. In case of IT and telco, most likely the IT uh, people are well prepared for attacks and can protect the systems better. The least protected, uh, as you can see, are energy and utilities, the transportation, logistics, and wholesale trade. Actually, all the industries where trade secrets are important, where confidential information is important. So, I will just repeat the key, well, from my point of view, the key points of this research. First thing is very clear, mobile work is the new reality of it as of today, and definitely smartphones are widely used for mobile work. So 70% of respondents told that they can use their private devices for work, and this has actually ruined uh, my imagination. I was always telling them, bring your own device trend is something which is viable in the United States, in the UK, maybe in Germany, it doesn't work here. Unfortunately, we have, or fortunately, I don't know, we have bring your own device also here. 70% of respondents work during their personal time, and the higher is the position and salary of the person, the more they tend to work. Which brings us to the result that those people who have the higher positions to work more, they are also working with sensitive data, confidential information, and it means that they are the, risk, the major risk exposure group. 42% of respondents here in Estonia state that they are sharing their devices used for work with someone. Family, friends, colleagues. This means that the question is very important. Is the, data on the, is the work data on those devices secured from unsanctioned access? And surely the most important question for me is if 62% of employees don't know the security policy or there is no security policy at all, how many people are complying with the security policy? So being completely honest, this is not the part where Samsung can directly help you. We are not selling, we are not producing security policies. We are just trying to raise the awareness that this is something important. And uh, why this is important? We have different threat factors. And so we are not talking about hackers, about cyber criminals, etc. But we have stolen devices, we have or lost devices. Sometimes people can get some malware to the device. We are, I'm repeating myself, but we have the cases with unsanctioned access to the device just by sharing the device with someone. And it, uh, some big companies really had problems when confidential information was accidentally or not accidentally sent from a mobile device to some competitor. And uh, it's also the matter of, let's call it, incorrect software behavior. So, uh, software that is tracking something, software that is submitting some information to websites and so on. So, how can Samsung help here? Uh, we are trying, we are working on this more and more solutions for enterprise mobility. Working in different areas, as I have said, unfortunately, we don't have 
policies available right now. Maybe in the future, in five years or so, we will be able to sell you a package of policies to implement. Uh, what do we have? It's well, what I call solution part. We have devices, different devices, uh, and some of them are more suitable for B2B use than the others. Then we are talking about management solutions allowing you to manage the devices remotely. And we are talking about the security, about the data security on the mobile devices, about protection of that data. So I will start from the devices, and actually it's more about say freedom to use the devices, it's about technical features, it's about a few words about operating system. And then I will cover a bit our solutions for device management and for security. So the worst thing that can happen to your totally new device is breaking the glass most time. If you just bought the device for 400 euro, you in two weeks you drop the device, your screen is broken, you need to replace that, you don't want to lose the warranty, you really have to go to original to authorized um, service center. So the costs will be between two and three hundred euro. So starting from last Friday, Samsung is offering free of charge one year screen insurance for our best models. S5, Note 4, Alpha, Tab S devices, and K Zoom devices. This is really free of charge. The only thing you need to do to use that offer is to register your device, your new device, using the mobile application. You have to download that application. You say, OK, this is my new device. I'm registering. That's all. So the process, in principle, looks like that. Okay, you have registered, you know until when your insurance is valid. If you have an accident and you need to replace the screen, you have to call the insurance company, the contacts of company Balta. Uh, sorry, what is the uh, name of application? Screen, Samsung Screen Care. It's available in Galaxy apps. No for S4 Mini? No. <laughs> and only for new devices. For S5, this is valid one month from purchase. For other devices, it's valid for new devices, newly purchased devices. So in principle, there will be some, if you need to fix the device, there will be some fee applied. For the first time, it's 30 euro franchise. For the second, it's 50 euro franchise. But that's, well, we also want to protect ourselves. And the scenario we want to protect is that, well, I have scratched my screen. I don't like it anymore. I will drop the device. And they will replace me in the, the screen for free. So that's only why 30 euros is OK from my point of view. Only screen, no other uh, It's screen protection. Actually, well, if you need to replace other parts, they are not that expensive as the screen. So, now going a bit more to the technical de features and hardware things. This is the uh, result of uh, VDR research uh, done in the United States. Consumer tablets are breaking at work 50% more than product devices. And this is the situation that we are trying to solve as well. Uh, and on the 4th of September in Berlin during the IFA exhibition, Samsung has presented its first tablet designed for B2B purposes. So the device is called Tab for Active. We have now on our stand two samples of them, but they are coming to all the markets, including the Baltic markets, by the end of this month. So what makes this device very special? The first thing is that Samsung has been working for two years and has been uh, talking to the major industry companies to define the requirements for such a device. So what did we get as the outcome? First of all, is the device, it's, yeah, I cannot say it's fully run device. 
in the device designed for tough environment. <coughs> so it is resistant for drop from one meter twenty when using you need to to put on the cover for better protection and the cover will be provided with the device together. You don't need to buy that. It's just well, additional measure. This is rock, it's, it's fine. Uh, then this device can work in the temperatures from minus twenty to plus sixty. That's by design. Then it's also IP67 resistant, meaning that if you accidentally drop uh, the device into water hole and leave it there for 30 minutes, not too deep, then it still should be working as it has been before. And what is quite useful is coverless jacks, so you don't need even to cover these holes in the device to ensure the protection. So the next part of the features are about usability and robustness of the device. First of all, we need robust communication. So the device is supporting LTE. The device is definitely supporting Wi-Fi, or you can get Wi-Fi on the model. Uh, surely you have Bluetooth in the device and so on. Talking about usability, yeah, we have up to 10 hours battery life. But if it's too few, or if you really are working hard on the device, then it won't last 10 hours. Then you can replace the battery. So this is the first Samsung tablet which has replaceable battery. And it doesn't take too long to replace that. It takes a bit longer to put uh, the cover back properly to ensure that it's water resistant. Additionally, if you need to work outside, it's good that it's, it can work by minus 20 degrees, but also if you are working in the sunshine, uh, this device has the brightest uh, screen we have for LCDs. So I myself have tested that on a sunny day in the Vilnius. Uh, you, you really can work with that. Especially, well, it will be a problem if there will be an application with black background and blue letters on top of that. But if the application contrast is quite normal, so white, uh, gray and black, uh, then it's everything is really fine. You can work on the sunny day. Plus, it has anti-reflective screen coating, so that also helps you working outside. Another feature of the device is what we call premium ID. It's really exclusive design rack device. It's light and it's thin. It's less than one centimeter. Thin, so almost as thin as my Galaxy S5, and its weight uh, less than 400 grams. Honestly saying, if I would need to use such type of device, then I would use that both for work and private life. Yes, it doesn't look as a rock brick. And additionally, what we have is a set of business tools inside the device. So we have Pogo pin for convenient charging. We have an NFC reader built in. Again, we did not have NFC in our tablets. And that was actually what I heard during my time working in Samsung for many times. Some businesses really need NFC. Then we have the camera with autofocus and LED flash. So you can use that. We have checked. It can be used for barcode scanning. It's not the fastest way to scan barcodes, but you, if you need to have only one device, then this works really reliable. Or you can view pictures during the night time as well. And uh, if you have to work outside in winter time, or even today, it would be a bit too cold. So we have a pen for the device that's part of the package. Unfortunately, I did not get it for these samples. They arrived without any box, so we still well, the pens are now in Riga, I believe. Uh, but you can take the pen with your gloves and you can work with the device. So that was about the Galaxy Tab for Active. As I have said, we have the samples. Please come and check. And now talking about management and security. First of all, 
not with all Samsung devices, but with major our devices, mobile phones and tablets that are used for business, what you get is more secure version of Android operating system than the stock Android is. <coughs> we have improved the security of the operating system kernel, and that has been validated in independently. Uh, we are providing uh, basics of the security, like data encryption on device and support for VPN. And what is also important is that Samsung is providing uh, the layer called NOC standard SDK. But this, in principle, the possibility to manage your smartphone or your tablet in the way like Active Directory allows to manage the computers. So the administrator really can manage your product. There are more than 100 uh, mobile device management solution vendors who are supporting uh, that uh, our NOC standard SDK, or previously it has been called uh, Enterprise SDK or SAFE. Uh, but we still felt that we need to give better or easier access, and that's why this year Samsung has presented it some solution for Knox EMM, Enterprise Mobility Management. So it's, I would say it's entry-level solution, but really suitable for majority of purposes. It allows to manage users, to manage devices and applications. If you are using Active Directory, then you can integrate this solution with Active Directory and afterwards uh, utilize Active Directory management tools to manage the mobile devices. <coughs> Which is what is important and maybe not very traditional for us. We are supporting not only our own devices, we are supporting Android devices in general, and we are supporting iOS-based devices. So what can you do with Nox EMM? Oops. One word left in the thing. So Galimibes means opportunities or possibilities. Uh, first of all, we are managing the policies, the rules that will be applied to the device. As you can see, we have a set of so-called common policies uh, that would apply for any Android device starting from version 2.3, like enforcing a screen block password to be used on the device uh, with some password rules like enforcing the full the encryption of the device, <coughs> creating Wi-Fi profiles, and managing camera and GPS. If you have your Apple devices, iPhone, iPad, and even a few things are valid for iPod, I believe, uh, you can apply iOS policies. So what do we support from the set of iOS policies? It's creation of VPN profiles, it's managing Exchange Active Sync, so setting up the emails on the devices, and, uh, uh, restricting or allowing access to different features of the device, starting from fingerprint authentication, backup options, and so on and so on. More than 80 different policies are supported. And due to the nature of operating system on Samsung devices, we can provide also much more policies for Samsung Android devices than for standard Android. Here again, VPN, Exchange, and even pop or IMAP, IMAP email setup on the devices. It's management of the applications like blacklists and whitelists of applications to be used or to be installed or to be stopped. It's uh, firewall management. It's management of different de mobile device settings and so on and so on, including, for example, the kiosk mode management. So really, with the policies, uh, it's possible to spend a couple of days and still not know all the policies that are inside. But in addition to the policies, we have the tools. So what can the administrator do by using Knox EMM? We can log the devices remotely. We can initiate factory reset to data wiping. We can reset passwords, or we can force the user to change the password. We can power off the device if we have the need for that. And then, uh, usually, you might need some device inventory functions, like to know the serial number, to know the version of the operating system on the device, and to, to get the list of installed applications and versions. And 
the most useful feature, if you are using any custom applications, will be ability to remotely deploy the applications and update them. If for your work you need your employees to use some APK or some custom uh, iOS package, you can define that once. You can assign it to user groups, and you know that it will assign and to distribute it and consult. If you update the package once on the portal, the update will get through to all the devices and the application will be updated. So that's shortly about device management and now moving to the data security. Actually last year Samsung started not from the management part, but from the security part, for the data security. And we have created a solution, it was called Simply Knox, now it's Knox Workspace but it's corporate data security solution for mobile devices. I, I really can say that it's the most secure Android solution available on the market. It has hardened operation system security, including routing de detection and data protection from unauthorized access. It's, the protection is based not only on software features, but even on the hardware features. And we have so-called dual persona solution for separating private information and company organization information on the same device. So first of all, talking about the credibility. Last year we have started with uh, FIPS certification and with US Department of Defense uh, certification. And then uh, this year, in the beginning of this year, uh, our solution has received the you know, first common criteria certification for mobile phones. Uh, this certification has been granted in the US and it has already been recognized by Australia, but the principle of common criteria is that it's a group of 27 countries who define the criteria together. And once one country has, is certifying, then other, there is a process how other countries will acknowledge that certification. So we managed that in Australia already, and other countries, I'm expecting that by the end of the year we will have maybe 20 countries who will approve that certification. In May, uh, in UK, the uh, approval has been granted to use Samsung Knox devices for public services for to work with official documentation. And three weeks ago, Samsung devices with Knox Workspace got Finnish Katakri Protective Level 4 certification. That's the highest level that has been ever achieved by a mobile phone in Finland. So how does this work? Just one picture. On mobile phone we have personal environment. That's our Android. So if the administrator is saying that that person should have the container to work with, not workspace. We get the dual environment. So this is the container environment. You can look at that as a virtual environment or sandbox environment. Uh, what is important for the users is that this environment looks the same as the original one. You don't have different icons, but even here you can see that this is, for example, the application that is actually being called from private environment. All the others are running within that sandbox. So I can have my gallery here and here. These are two separate galleries. The pictures I have in my gallery in private environment are not visible here in corporate environment. But if I have the pictures here in corporate environment, I do not access them from the private environment. And this who environment is the corporate environment is protected. We can apply protection for the rule phone, but this is uh, the choice of administrator and the user. But if someone starts using Knox workspace, then there are levels of protection that you cannot avoid. Like the very basic, the corporate environment has always to be unlocked by using password or dual authentication port, for example, password and fingerprint. You cannot use mm, PIN, you cannot use graphic key to unlock the container. Another thing is that it's an isolated environment, so we have a separate Android user 
that has access to the container. Meaning that if someone rules the device, the root is, does not see that the container is on the device. But that just for better protection, the whole data which is inside the container, it's encrypted using 256-bit algorithm. Again, the management of, of the container and the decision to use that or not is not up to the user solely. It's, the container can be deployed only using mobile device management solution. Samsung Knox EMM support that, supports that, but there are more than 10 MDMs that support container as well. Another important thing for the data security is VPN support. So usually on your mobile phone you can use VPN, but then the whole data that will be sent out and received will go that, via that VPN tunnel to your corporate server, most likely, and someone has to process that. If you are using the container, we can set up the VPN that will work just on the container level, or even to define VPN per application. Meaning that this application, this is our email. It has its own security, it has its own protection, we don't need VPN for that. But this is our CRM application, and I want to protect that. For that purpose, I have a VPN tunnel established, and I will use that only for CRM. Then, as I have mentioned, we have isolated types. So the apps from container do not access private data and backwards. And uh, the communication in general is limited. Uh, so if the administrator permits and if the user permits that, we can share the contact data and calendar information. Because this makes sense to know, for example, my work appointment while I'm in private environment not to overlap them. And then again, remotely we can configure email, we can put uh, different application restrictions, we can manage the firewalls inside the container and manage other restrictions. So this is a very, very short overview of Knox Workspace Solution. And we still have time, if you have any questions, I will try to answer. I can well answer in English, I can answer in Russian. I do not manage Estonian yet, but if I will be as frequent guest to Tallinn as I was this year, then maybe in a couple of months I will start speaking Estonian as well. 